my other friend replied, no, 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 you're okay, it's all right. One of my first automotive gigs was at my aunt's body shop, um, actually called the Auto Gallery. And I was a helper and just general tech, clean up, prepping cars and stuff like that. But one day on the tow truck from their New York shop came a royal blue with metal flake sparkles on Dayton wire wheels convertible LX 5.0 Mustang. Straight drug dealer package. My, all, all the way my style. So uh, it comes on the truck, I'm like 16, and I'm awestruck. I'm like, I gotta have that car. I fell in love immediately on the truck. I still see the car on the truck right now. So my uncle decides he wants to paint it uh, like candy apple red and sell it. And so I said, of course, you should let me sell that car for you at 16, 17, being a helper. Like, let me sell, I can sell that car. Funny enough, I go home and tell my mom about it, who's going through a midlife crisis. And she comes to pick me up the next day and she sees the car and she's like, that thing's terrible. And I'm like, we're gonna paint it red. It's gonna be awesome. You'll love it. You should buy this car. You've been wanting a convertible. It's a convertible. Minus the fact it's a V8, it's a five speed, none of which you know anything about. It's a convertible, you should buy it. So a week later, two weeks later, the car is red. She comes back, she sees it. Long story short, she buys it. Of course, after two or three years of having the car, it, she pulled out of a Kroger one day and laid into it and it turned all the way around on her and she was facing the other way. The car was immediately parked in our driveway I started my campaign to take it. So by the time I was about 18, I had started really taking it and it was pretty much mine. I got in a little trouble with it and then it wasn't mine and it became my uncle's. So when I turned 21, I bought the car back from my uncle and I took the Dayton's off of it and put some Mustang wheels on it and I did all this stuff. Um, I was working at a custom shop that we had in, on Piedmont in, uh, in Buckhead. I was on the way to get parts for the shop and I had a buddy that needed to go to the parts store too. So we pulled out going down Piedmont, going towards uh, Cheshire Bridge and we're about a half mile from there. And get to the light at Cheshire Bridge, I'm in the Mustang, my buddy's in his Turbo NX2000 Pulsar and you know, we get the look going and there we go from the light we go so by the time i grab second gear in this car a lady is pulling out of the strip club of course on piedmont and she pulls out into the first lane in front of my friend he jams the brakes i see him just go back behind me i look up she's scared so she moves now into the second lane and uh who knows how many thousand pound v8 no ABS, you know, no airbags. And I just plow right into the side of her T-bone or, you know, doing maybe 40, 50 miles an hour, sliding to a stop. And uh, we send each other all the way across the street. It's a terrible accident. You know, I'm, I'm out, I'm unconscious. Um, so, oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. So, just up the street, my friends, after even five minutes, standing in front of the shop, they see the traffic start to back up and they automatically know, because if you know me, you know this is a possibility, <laughs> that something has happened shortly down the street. So they jump in their cars without any notice of what's going on, two cars, they you know, speed down the street and they pull up. And uh, actually the picture that I have is of my friend standing next to my car trying to wake me up uh, because my car is sideways now in the middle of Piedmont. And I mean, you know, it's just hood everywhere, it's done. So I wake up, I look out my passenger window and I can see the skyline of Buckhead. And I'm thinking, that's the wrong way. That's not, that's supposed to be in front of me. And I look over and my friend's standing there and he's just going, don't move. It's okay, you had a crash. 
but you're okay. Don't move. It wasn't your fault. And I proceed to keep passing out and waking up and asking those questions. What happened? Was it my fault? <laughs> Am I okay? You're okay. Don't move. Just hold your hand here. And I'm like, well, that can't be good. If I got to hold my hand here. And then my second tech who is, who is actually the one next to me has now parked his car down in the parking lot to get out of the way of maybe the accusation that we were street racing. <laughs> and he's come up to the car. I remember being like this, seeing him walk in front of the car to the driver's side, to my other friend, and then just go, damn. In which my other friend replied, no, 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 no. You're okay. It's all right. Nothing's wrong. Just hold your hand here. So I had a huge gash in the side of my head, which I still carry the scar, which is a great story. And about 15 stitches, eight staples, just definitely like one of the worst accidents and the worst way to lose one of my cars that I really coveted um, to a stripper's mom, apparently, who got scared and pulled out of the street in front of us. Um, that it was, it was a sore day. I actually, I went to the hospital and my cousins own a, still own a body shop, a throw off of that body shop where I got the car. And he was walking through Buckhead towing the very next morning as he does to check on cars he's picking up and cars that are totaled and stuff like that. And he said he walks by this red Mustang where the front's just like folded over the windshield basically. They had to jaws of life me out of the car. They cut the top off the car. So the top's like laying next to the car. The car is there. And he said he walked by and he stopped and he backed up and looked again and was like, there's only one red Mustang like that. So that's literally how my family found out that I was in the car accident. I was such a head injury and in surgery and unconscious that whole evening of the accident that nobody knew where I was. And so the next morning, my cousin starts calling everybody like, uh, I'm pretty sure I just saw DJ's car in the impound yard smashed up. And so then my family starts calling around. They find me at Grady in a room with a big bandage over half of my face like this. It was totaled and I went two days later with my cousin back to see it. I'm standing there with him and I'm like, bro, we can cut the front off of this. And I mean, that's me. I'm, I want to save them all optimistic he just looks at me like it, it's done dj that it's done you gotta let this one go i'm like dude I, I know we can we can just chop the front how many front mustang clips are there out there like we could we could do this and he's like no bro let it die <laughs> the back fenders the wheel well the back wheel well to that car was like this that's how hard i hit the lady it bent the car in the front and the back i mean it was done Well, I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm about to go try it out on the Porsche and I'll let you guys know how it goes.